My name is Sam. I've always been the quiet type, more at home with lines of code on my laptop than at some noisy party. Raised in a pretty conservative family, I learned early to keep to the sidelines, observing rather than participating. But life has its twists, and mine came in the vibrant form of Lisa, my girlfriend of two years. She's a fashion designer, bursting with color and creativity in everything she does, pulling me into a world far brighter than the muted tones I'm used to. It was late October, and Lisa was buzzing with excitement about an upcoming costume party. It's not just any party, Sam. It's a chance to be whoever you want to be, without any rules or judgments, she explained, her eyes sparkling with the thrill of it all. I nodded, trying to match her enthusiasm. But deep down, the very thought made me uneasy. As the day approached, Lisa's excitement only grew, and so did her plans for our costumes. I have the perfect idea, she exclaimed one evening, laying out her vision with the flair of a true artist. It wasn't long before she revealed her grand plan for me to attend the party dressed as a woman. I paused, taken aback by her suggestion. Come on, Sam, it's all in good fun. Imagine the look on everyone's face when you walk in. It'll be the highlight of the night, she argued with a mischievous grin. Her enthusiasm was infectious, yet a part of me recoiled at the idea. The thought of stepping out so far from my comfort zone to embrace such an unfamiliar part of myself was daunting. Seeing my hesitation, Lisa softened her tone. Look, I know it's a big ask, but I'm here with you. It's just for one night, and if you really don't like it, you can change back. But I think you might surprise yourself. As I looked into her earnest, encouraging face, I found it hard to say no. Lisa had this way of making the improbable seem possible, the scary a bit more exciting. So with a deep breath, I agreed. All right, let's do it. Let's make this party unforgettable, I said, trying to sound more confident than I felt. That decision set the stage for a night that would turn out to be far more transformative than I could ever have imagined. The night of the party arrived faster than I wanted it to. My heart was a drumbeat of nervous anticipation as Lisa helped me get ready. The transformation was nothing short of astounding. With each layer of clothing, each brushstroke of makeup, I felt as though I was stepping into an entirely different skin, a version of myself I never knew existed. Dressed in a flowing skirt and a tastefully elegant blouse, I barely recognized the man, no, the person, staring back at me from the mirror. Lisa watched with a proud smile, her hands putting the final touches on my appearance. You look amazing, Sam, she said, and I could hear the genuine admiration in her voice. We arrived at the party, and the moment we stepped through the door, it felt like entering a new world. The room was a kaleidoscope of colors and characters, a sea of people celebrating the weird and the wonderful. I expected whispers, stares, maybe even snickers. Instead, I was met with compliments and cheerful greetings. You look fantastic, someone called out. Such a brave choice, another added. Each comment, each smile from strangers and friends alike, bolstered my confidence bit by bit. As the evening wore on, I found myself relaxing into the role. The initial discomfort faded, replaced by a strange comfort. The clothes, the makeup, the playful act of being someone else. It felt liberating. It wasn't just about dressing as a woman, it was about stepping away from who I always believed I had to be. Seeing my ease, Lisa leaned over during a slow dance, her words barely audible over the music. You're doing wonderfully, Sam. How do you feel? It's different, but good, I admitted, surprised by my own honesty. I feel like I'm not just hiding behind a costume, but maybe discovering a part of me I've ignored for too long. Her eyes lit up at my words. That's beautiful, Sam. Maybe this could be more than just a one-night thing? Her suggestion lingered in my mind long after the party ended. Over the following weeks, with Lisa's gentle encouragement, I began to explore more. We started small, just a pair of earrings one day, a scarf the next. Each piece felt like a puzzle piece to a picture I had never seen but somehow recognized. The more I experimented, the more I found solace in this new form of expression. Each outfit was a statement, a step toward understanding the complex landscape of my own identity. 
It wasn't about becoming someone else, but about uncovering the breadth of who I could be. This journey, which began as a playful challenge, was quickly transforming into a profound exploration of self. The idea of going out in public fully dressed as a woman was a mountain I never thought I'd climb. Yet, there I was, standing at the foot of it, ready to take the first step. Lisa held my hand tightly as we planned our day out. Just think of it as another adventure, she said with a reassuring smile. I nodded, my stomach churning with a mix of excitement and fear. That Saturday, we chose a quiet mall, thinking it would be less intimidating for my first public outing. Dressed in a flattering summer dress and comfortable flats, I felt both vulnerable and strangely empowered. Lisa's presence was a comforting reminder that I wasn't alone in this. Walking through the mall, I was acutely aware of every glance directed our way. Yet, as we continued, my anxiety began to wane. People were largely absorbed in their own worlds. A few looked curiously, but most just passed by. Lisa squeezed my hand whenever I faltered, her support unwavering. We wandered through stores, Lisa encouraging me to pick out clothes. I was starting to enjoy the experience, reveling in the freedom of exploring a part of me that had been hidden for so long. We laughed over accessories, debated over dresses, and I even found myself giving fashion advice to a couple who seemed appreciative of my suggestions. For a few precious hours, I was simply another person enjoying a day out shopping. However, this newfound liberation was abruptly shattered when we decided to grab lunch at a nearby restaurant. As we settled into a booth, I caught sight of familiar faces walking in. My parents. My heart stopped. They hadn't seen me yet, and a part of me wanted to flee. But it was too late. Our eyes met, and the shock on their faces was palpable. They approached our table, confusion and disapproval written all over their faces. Sam, what is this? My father asked, his voice a mix of anger and bewilderment. My mother just stared her expression one of hurt and confusion. I tried to explain to make them understand this was about discovering myself, not about defiance or rebellion. Mom, Dad, this is me exploring parts of who I am. It's hard to explain, but it's important to me, I stammered, my voice shaky. They couldn't or wouldn't understand. This is not how we raised you, my father said sternly. We taught you to be respectable, not this. The confrontation escalated, voices rising, attracting unwanted attention. Lisa stood by me, her presence a silent pillar of strength, but the damage was done. We left the restaurant hastily, the echoes of my parents' harsh words ringing in my ears. That evening, as Lisa and I sat quietly at home, the full weight of the day's events began to settle on my shoulders. The joy of the morning felt like a distant memory, overshadowed by the pain of my parents' rejection. I felt torn between the freedom of expressing my true self and the heavy burden of familial expectations. It was a conflict deep and painful, marking a pivotal moment in my journey of self-discovery. In the aftermath of the confrontation with my parents, the once comforting solitude of my home felt stifling, filled with an unspoken tension that echoed the turmoil within me. I realized then that if I were to continue on this path, I needed support not just from Lisa, but from others who understood the complexities of gender expression. It was Lisa who found a local support group for cross-dressers. I was hesitant at first. The thought of sharing such intimate details of my life with strangers was daunting, but she gently encouraged me, reminding me that understanding and embracing my identity was a journey we could take together, but also one I needed to explore independently. The first meeting was a revelation, the group was a diverse mix of individuals, each with their own stories of discovery, rejection, acceptance, and love. For the first time, I didn't feel alone in my experiences. I listened, shared, and found solace in the common threads that bound us. Each story added to my understanding of the vast spectrum of gender identity and expression. I learned about the struggles and triumphs, the courage it took each person to live their truth, Encouraged by my newfound community, I began to embrace my dual identity with a sense of pride rather than fear. I realized that dressing as a woman was not just a disguise. It was a part of who I am, a part that brought me peace and happiness. 
It wasn't about leaving Sam behind, but allowing another part of myself to surface and breathe. Amidst this journey of self-discovery, Lisa came up with an idea that both thrilled and terrified me. She wanted to organize a fashion show centered on breaking gender norms, showcasing the fluidity and beauty of gender expression, and she wanted me to be one of the models. The idea seemed far-fetched at first. Me on a runway? But Lisa's enthusiasm was contagious. Think about it, Sam. It's not just a show, it's a statement. It's about visibility, about saying it's okay to be who you are. She explained with a passion that made me believe it was possible. Preparations for the fashion show began in earnest. Lisa was a whirlwind of activity, designing outfits that blurred traditional gender lines, each piece a work of art that challenged conventions. As the day of the show approached, my nerves were palpable. Rehearsals became my new reality, each walk down the makeshift runway a step towards reclaiming my identity. The night of the show, backstage was a flurry of nerves and excitement. I was dressed in an elegant ensemble that was unmistakably feminine, yet undeniably bold. As I stood waiting for my cue, Lisa squeezed my hand, whispering, you're amazing just by being you. Then it was time. The lights, the music, the audience, it all faded into a blur as I stepped onto the runway. With each step, I felt a piece of my old fears shed, replaced by a profound sense of freedom and acceptance. I was not just Sam or Samantha, I was both complex and complete. The applause that greeted me as I walked back was not just for the clothes or the show, it was a celebration of diversity, of courage, and of the beauty of being one's true self. That night, I wasn't just modeling clothes, I was showcasing a part of my soul, and it felt like victory. The fashion show was more than just an event, it became a turning point in my life. Among the faces in the crowd, I spotted my parents, their presence was unexpected, a jolt of anxiety amidst my newfound confidence. I walked the runway not just with the eyes of the audience upon me, but with the gaze of the two people who had shaped much of who I was. After the show, as the applause faded and people began to mingle, Lisa and I approached my parents. They seemed different. The hardness in their eyes had softened, replaced by a curious, almost hesitant openness. Sam, we... we came because we wanted to understand, my mother began, her voice trembling slightly. Seeing you up there, so confident and happy, it's a lot to take in, but we can't ignore how alive you seemed. My father nodded, his usual stern demeanor tempered with a touch of bewilderment and awe. We may not fully understand this part of your life, Sam, but we love you. We want to try to understand what makes you happy. The conversation that followed was tentative, but filled with a genuine desire to bridge the gap that had formed between us. We talked about my journey, about the support group, and about how Lisa and my friends helped me embrace all parts of myself. It wasn't a complete reconciliation, but it was a start, a foundation we could build on. In the weeks that followed, my relationship with my parents slowly began to mend. They asked questions, sometimes awkwardly, trying to grasp the nuances of my dual identity. Each question, each conversation, was a step toward understanding and acceptance. Meanwhile, Lisa and I found our bond strengthening in ways we hadn't anticipated. She supported me not just as a partner, but as my biggest advocate. Together, we navigated the complexities of our relationship, discovering that true love isn't just about sharing the easy moments, but about standing together through challenges. Inspired by my experiences, I became more vocal about gender expression. I started a blog, sharing my story and the lessons I learned about identity, acceptance, and the beauty of being true to oneself. My story resonated with others, and soon I found myself part of a larger community, advocating for freedom and understanding in gender expression. Lisa and I continued to collaborate on projects that pushed the boundaries of fashion and gender norms. We hosted workshops, spoke at events, and partnered with organizations that supported gender diversity. Our life together became not just a personal journey, but a shared mission to advocate for a world where everyone can freely express who they are. As I reflect on the path I've traveled, 
from the uncertainty and fear of that first party to the advocacy and love that fill my life now, I realized that embracing my true self was the key to unlocking a world of possibility. It wasn't just about the clothes or the makeup. It was about discovering the strength that comes from living authentically, supported by love and understanding. In this journey, I found not just myself, but also a way to help others find their own paths to acceptance and freedom.